From brand new attractions to classic experiences, Disney World's got a lot of must-do rides that you need to put on your 2024 itinerary. But why are these specific rides going to be the ones we'll tell you to prioritize over all the others next year? Find out today here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. So here's a fact for you. You don't have to ride every single ride in Disney World in order to get your money's worth out of your trip. And depending on your trip, it might be downright impossible to achieve anyways. So if you're trying to pick and choose what rides to prioritize next year, I've got a good top 10 mix here for you with dark rides, coasters, and a few surprise entries that you might not be expecting to see here either. But maybe you'll agree with me regardless. You'll have to let me know in the comments in the end. Before we get started, we've got a gift for you though, and it's not even Christmas yet. Scan the QR code you see on the screen or head to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Disney plans to get your own free copy of our Disney World planning worksheets. These are full of tips and timelines and packing essentials to make your next Disney World trip easier. Okay, number one on our list for 2024, Tiana's Bayou Adventure. It's not open yet, but it will be. And once it is, things are gonna be popping over in Frontierland. Tiana's Bayou Adventure is the new theme for the classic Magic Kingdom log flume ride, which used to be Splash Mountain before it closed this past January. This reimagined story will follow the Princess and the Frog crew and explore what happens to the lot after the end of the animated movie. During the course of the ride, you're gonna travel through the bayous of Louisiana to help Tiana with her her newest endeavor, Tiana's Foods, while also preparing for the Mardi Gras season. So get ready for jazzy music and a lot of it. Currently, Tiana's Bayou Adventure is slated to open by the end of 2024, but that's pretty much all we know about its release date so far. What I will say is that before you plan your entire 2024 trip around Tiana's Bayou Adventure, you'll want to wait for more details regarding its release because you're not going to want to plan an entire trip for Tiana's ride and then wind up missing it by a few weeks or even days. New rides tend to use a virtual queue system, which we got a whole post about on our website if you want to learn about how it works step by step, how to secure your place in these boarding groups. What I will say about virtual queues for now is this. Don't purchase Magic Kingdom tickets expecting you'll be able to jump into a physical standby queue whenever you want to, since more than likely it's going to be the virtual way or the highway with this one for a little while. If you want to try to be one of the first riders aboard Tiana's Bayou Adventure, be sure to download the My Disney Experience app to access the ride's virtual queue, which again, we can almost guarantee it's going to have. Worst comes to worst, you'll probably be able to purchase an individual lightning lane for Tiana's ride instead, which will help you bypass all the virtual queue hassle and stress, but at a price per person per ride. Now, Disney hasn't announced there will be an individual lightning lane for this ride, so we'll just have to wait and see. And don't forget to pack your patient pants too, because you're going to need them as well. Brand new rides aren't always the most reliable, and they could go down quite a few times during the first official day on the job. So set your expectations and don't panic when you hear that the ride is temporarily unavailable during your visit, because that might happen a few times over before you've finally been able to board, causing your wait to be longer than you originally expected it to be. We're staying in Magic Kingdom for the next one, Tron Light Cycle Run. So don't let Tiana's Bayou Adventure distract you from the other new ride in Magic Kingdom, the one that just opened this past April inside Tomorrowland. Tron Light Cycle Run is a high-speed coaster that launches you into the grid for a race through a dark computerized world, reaching speeds of up to 59 miles per hour. But what makes this one really unique is the fact that you'll board it like you would a bike. These light cycles require riders to straddle the seat and lean forward. When you pull down on the handle, Bars in front of you, the back of the seat kind of goes against your back and small metal restraints will come down behind your legs. The ride seating format really does make it feel like you're blasting into the digital realm on your very own light cycle. While the seats aren't miserably uncomfortable or anything, not all guests are going to want or be able to ride on these light cycles. However, Disney did plan ahead and has included adaptable seats onto the ride as well where you sit up with a lap bar like a standard roller coaster. To request an adaptive seat, speak with a cast member toward the front of the ride. They'll take you off to the side before boarding so you can wait for the next train with the adaptive seating available. If you're not sure whether you're going to need an adaptive seat or not, go ahead and try out the test vehicles at the front of the queue before you get in line. Tron is also the first Disney ride to have complimentary lockers where guests can store their bags and other belongings before getting onto the ride, since you're not going to have a place to store them otherwise, aside from a teeny tiny compartment at the top of your light cycle that's big enough for basically a phone, maybe a wallet, and maybe something else really small. 
To open a locker, just scan your magic band or ticket and make sure you keep track of which number locker you selected. But even if you do forget, not to worry, a cast member can help you track it down. After riding the coaster, you'll be directed back to the locker area to retrieve your items. Just scan your magic band or ticket that you used to open the locker the first time and it should pop right open. Note that your magic mobile card on your smartphone cannot be used for lockers. You must have a physical ticket or use your magic band. If you don't have either, ask a cast member for a locker card. Once you use it to store your items and get them back again, you can return it before exiting the ride building. And don't forget, this ride uses a virtual queue too. We're not sure how much longer it's going to use one, but per the release of this video, it's still going strong. So you're going to want to make sure you grab your virtual queue boarding pass at either 7 a.m. or 1 p.m. on the dot for the chance to board this ride, or you can also purchase an individual lightning lane. Now, quick reminder, this ride is actually much better at night because of the lighting in the canopy outside. So I would say if you can ride it at night, you should. Moving on to Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Now, a lot of you would probably think that this ride should be number one, and ah, uh, I kind of agree. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is over in Epcot, and Epcot's been keeping us on our toes with all sorts of new stuff lately. One of our favorite things to come out of the Epcot transformation, probably my favorite thing to come out of the Epcot transformation, is Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. This ride opened in Epcot's World Discovery back in May 2022, and it's one of the longest in door coasters ever built. This ride takes you on an intergalactic journey with the Guardians of the Galaxy crew and features thrilling coaster elements like a backwards launch, 360 degree spins, and a very, very, very good soundtrack. No, really, the soundtrack's one of the best parts about this ride because it's completely random. So you have the potential of singing along to one of six songs plucked fresh out of the 1980s during the course of your adventure, which I absolutely love. Even though this ride has been around for well over a year, it's still a super popular one, so Epcot's continuing to use a virtual queue system for it. Now that could potentially change in 2024, but for now, just be prepared to get a boarding group number for Cosmic Rewind or bypass that free virtual queue altogether with the purchase of an individual lightning lane. That price usually ranges around $14 to $17 per person. Now, here's a big cautionary tale. While not everyone is going to feel motion sickness on this ride, because that spinning movement I mentioned earlier is more of a slow spin that'll help you see everything going on around you rather than a thrilling spin meant to set your tummy in a spiral. Several guests, including me, have reported that this one can really make them nauseated at times, thanks to the movement plus the screen technology. So if you want to ride this one, but you are prone to motion sickness, be sure to take some non-drowsy Dramamine or wear a motion sickness patch before boarding, just to be on the safe side of things. Lots of you will remember my story of having to go to first aid after riding this a couple of times and get that Dramamine, and the nurse knew exactly what I needed when I walked in. She had seen lots of people come in with the same concern. Oh, good. Good reminder, you can go to first aid and get Dramamine. So the next one we want to talk about is maybe a little surprise. It's Star Tours. Star Tours may not be part of the main Galaxy's Edge hoopla in Hollywood Studios, but that doesn't mean you should skip it and head straight to Batuu, because ironically enough, Star Tours is actually going to be the most updated Star Wars attraction in 2024. Star Tours is a motion simulator experience over in Echo Lake, where you'll board a space shuttle and travel the galaxy thanks to your pilot, C-3PO, as well as the magic of 3D. There are a variety of scenes that you could get across different Star Wars planets, and they're all randomized so the experience changes each time you ride. And we're not talking randomized like we did with Cosmic Rewind earlier, where you'll have the potential of getting one out of six options. There are literally hundreds of different ways your ride through could go, so you never know where you might end up next. Speaking of which, Star Tours is about to get even more scene possibilities starting next spring. While we don't know all the different scenes and characters that could be added to this ride, we do know Disney's planning on adding Ahsoka based around her Disney Plus series. So who knows, maybe we'll see Mando and Grogu too, or Boba Fett, one can only hope. At either rate, it's nice to see Star Wars getting some love in 2024, since the Galaxy's Edge rides do tend to overshadow it most of the time. We're not gonna make it, we're not gonna make it. Well, hopefully that's not the case, because I sure do wanna ride Dinosaur at least a dozen times over before things start changing in Dinoland USA. Well, I don't, personally. I hate this ride, it is very scary. 
<laughs> but maybe you do. So during Destination D23 this year, we learned that the fate of Dino Land inside Disney's Animal Kingdom is looking bleak. Real bleak. As in, Imagineers are getting ready to replace it as we speak. Bleak. And what they're more than likely replacing it with is a new Tropical Americas section, which will feature attractions and details from Encanto and Indiana Jones. Interesting mashup. So, what does this mean for our good friend Dinosaur? Well, there's a possibility that Indiana Jones will eventually be replacing this attraction since the ride system used for Dinosaur is very similar to the Indiana Jones ride that already exists over in Disneyland. Now, Disney said that there's still a long way to go before these ideas start to take shape inside the park. So that does mean we've still got plenty of time, hopefully, to ride Dinosaur during 2024. Ooh, I love that this is on this particular list. We are gonna talk Haunted Mansion. There's nothing like a classic dark ride aboard a doom buggy through the mansion filled with 999 happy haunts, right? Okay, make that a thousand haunts because it seems like another ghoulish specter has just volunteered to be part of this fan favorite Magic Kingdom attraction. If you've been to Disneyland or you've seen this year's Haunted Mansion film, you might be familiar with the Hatbox Ghost. This animatronic specter has developed quite the cult following with fans thanks to his ability to dematerialize his own head and, well, put it in a hat box. But the Haunted Mansion in Magic Kingdom has been hat box ghostless. Apparently there is a backstory for his absence here. According to Disney lore, he was one of the original haunts, but got the heck out of Dodge after the mansion was discovered by us foolish mortals. Way to go, humans. But apparently he got over his disgust towards us because at the end of November, the hat box ghost made his way into Liberty Square and set up his afterlife residency by the endless hallway. So when you come to visit Magic Kingdom in 2024, expect to see one more ghoul figure roaming the corridors of this classic Omnimover attraction. Next ride you're not going to want to miss in Disney World in 2024, Rise of the Resistance. What can I say? Despite how moody Rise of the Resistance can be, it's still one of the most impressive rides to hit the Disney scene to date. According to Disney, Rise of the Resistance is one of the most advanced and immersive experiences ever undertaken by Walt Disney Imagineering. The attraction features multiple levels, four plus ride systems, and over 300 animatronic figures. And it's not just the ride that has all of this. The interactive stuff starts up inside the queue, making all the pre-shows just as much of a part of the story as the ride itself. Now, I hate that anytime I bring up this ride, I've got to tell you about the negative stuff too, but it's important for y'all to be aware of this ride's finicky personality because it can really squash your spirit if you're not expecting it. Because of the massive amount of technology that makes up this ride, we see it breaking down almost daily. Sometimes it goes down for just a few minutes, sometimes a few hours, and every so often it goes down the rest of the day. If you're on the ride when Rise of the Resistance has one of its infamous temper tantrums, you'll likely receive a lightning lane pass to return and re-ride it later, when it's available again, if it's available again. Sometimes these passes are also given to guests who are about to board the attraction, and in our experience, we usually see cast members start giving Lightning Lane passes to guests who have made it to at least the first major showroom, where you get to meet Ray and BB-8. But if you were more towards the tail end of the line or even towards the middle, you're just going to have to decide whether you want to hang out in the queue a little longer and hope that the ride goes back online soon, or cut your losses and try again later when it's hopefully back up and running. Unfortunately, there's no right or wrong answer for whether you should wait out the temporary delay or not. This is one of the most horrible decisions you gotta make when you're in Disney World. Do I stay in the line or do I head out? But whenever this happens to us, cause it happens all the time, we tend to stay put for about 15 to 20 minutes before jumping ship just to see if the issue is a quick fix or not. And test track, it's time to put that pedal to the metal before we gotta put that pedal away for a while. Test Track in its current form is a high-speed Epcot ride that gives you the ability to create your own sim vehicle and test it out on a futuristic Tron-looking track. And while Test Track is still super popular in Epcot, often pushing wait times that range around 45 to 60 plus minutes, it's going to be shutting down for a good long while as it undergoes a major retheme again. Now, Disney hasn't given us too many details regarding this reimagining, but we do know they've stated during the Destination D23 convention that Disney wants to take inspiration from Epcot's old World of Motion attraction, which used to be located where Test Track now stands. So, 
Will this reimagining happen at the beginning of 2024? The middle? The end? Will it even happen at all in 2024? We are not sure, but we'll definitely keep you in the loop and let you know when we hear more about it. In the meantime, be sure to hop on this road racer for one last victory lap before these changes start to take place. And don't forget the test track has a single rider line available, which you can potentially use to cut down on those uber long wait times if you don't mind splitting up your party. Number nine on our list is Flight of Passage. This is by far and away the most popular ride in all of Disney's Animal Kingdom. And that's saying something because Animal Kingdom's got some really cool rides. It could also be argued that it's the most popular ride in Disney World because it usually does have the longest wait time, but that could be because of the ride systems and loading times. But rest assured, it's popular, and its popularity can wind up being your downfall if you're not careful. Flight of Passage is a 3D flight simulation experience inside Pandora World of Avatar. It's kind of like if Soren and Epcot and Tron Light Cycle Run had a baby. You sit on the back of a banshee in a similar way that you straddle the light cycle on Tron, but you'll be flying over expansive landscapes much like you do on Soren. Except instead of real places that you can visit in real life, Flight of Passage takes you into the mythical realm of Pandora, where you'll come face to face with fantasy creatures, bioluminescent caves, lots of good smells, splashes of water from those crashing waves, and tons of banshees, both good and not so good. Because of this ride's popularity, you're more than likely going to see it having the highest wait times in the park. Now, depending on who you talk to, the queue here is either gruesomely long or just flat out entertaining. After all, you do get to wind your way around the outdoor flora, Navi cave paintings, bioluminescent plant life, and a Pandora conservation initiative lab with a full on avatar just chilling out in the gigantic space tube thing. So there really is always something to look at while you wait. Not to mention, midway through the queue, there's a water bottle refill station and a bathroom just in case you need to make a pit stop, but you don't want to leave the line and backtrack all the way out of the queue to find one. And then you have to attempt to find your group in line again. With that being said, the flight of passage wait times can be overwhelmingly massive, entertaining queue or not. While most of the time you can rely on rope drop or early theme park entry to help you get in line for the most popular rides before they get terribly long, that's usually not going to be the case with Flight of Passage, since that's the first ride everyone's going to be hitting up in the morning. When it comes to Flight of Passage, it's actually not a bad idea to wait until later on in the day to get in line for this one. Lots of guests with park hoppers will start their day in Animal Kingdom, but hop over to a different park later on, since Animal Kingdom does close the earliest out of all four parks, with no nighttime spectaculars to stick around for. So they'll get their stuff done in the morning in Animal Kingdom and then head over to Epcot or Magic Kingdom or Hollywood Studios. So you might find that late afternoon and on until the evening could have more chill waits for Flight of Passage than at the start of the day. But if it's a busy season, it's a busy season. You can also choose to purchase an individual lightning lane for it if you don't want to worry about waiting whatsoever, which typically costs $11 to $16 per person per ride. The next one on our list is the Disney Skyliner. Whoops. Are we cheating with this one? I don't think so, because if you've been on the Disney Skyliner, then you know how awesome this transportation service can really be. You might disagree with me on this, and if you do, that's okay. We can all have different opinions, but the Disney World Skyliner is totally a ride. And depending on your group, it might even be the best ride of your trip for four key reasons. One, it's convenient. If you're staying at one of the Skyliner hotels like Art of Animation, Pop Century, Riviera, Caribbean Beach, then you've got quick transportation to and from both Epcot and and Hollywood Studios each day, as well as the other Skyliner resorts you're not staying in. Two, anyone can ride it, even if you're not a guest at one of the Skyliner hotels. You're still more than welcome to use it to explore that line of hotels or to park hop between Epcot and Hollywood Studios. Three, it's free. You don't even need a park ticket to hop on board. And four, it's pretty thrilling. I mean, you literally get to fly across Disney World. Plus, the takeoff and landing can actually pick up a little speed there, making it more ride-like than maybe you would have expected. It's definitely worth checking out the Skyliner during your 2024 trip, as long as you're not afraid of heights. But let me warn you, for the past couple of years, Disney has been closing the Skyliner during the last week of January for routine maintenance, and it seems like history is getting ready to repeat itself. Starting on January 16th and going through January 27th, 2024, the Skyliner will be closed for routine maintenance. While the areas between Pop Century, Art of Animation, and Caribbean Beach Resort, and the areas between the Caribbean Beach Resort to Hollywood Studios will be closed from January 16th to the 21st, the section between Epcot's International Gateway and the Riviera Resort will remain closed until January 27th. 
While the Skyliner is closed, there'll be complimentary bus service for each of the Skyliner resorts to and from Epcot and Hollywood Studios. So if you're planning a trip between those dates, be sure to prepare for other modes of transportation or, you know, hold off on your trip altogether if you don't want to miss the Skyliner at all. All right, now you got to let me know what your top 10 rides for 2024 are going to be. It is very, very hard to narrow it down to just 10 rides because they all have something that you really, really want to talk about. I mean, we don't have Tower of Terror in here. We don't have Living with the Land in here. There are so many rides that I absolutely love and adore that didn't make it into this list. So let me know yours in the comments. How many of your must-dos overlap with our list here? And how many are you adding to our video? Oh, and before you head out, don't forget to head over to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Disney plans to pick up your free Disney World planning worksheets. And be sure to come back and visit us for more 2024 videos to come. Thanks for listening, everyone. And thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.